Hello, welcome everyone to our live coaching demos webinar. We've just got started. I've set the the recording on and so we're going to get rocking and rolling right away. My name is Alison Handren. I am the CEO and founder of Coaching Out of the Box. And today you're in for a treat. You have, we have myself, which is very uh, clear on the screen. And uh, you can read all these things that it says. But the bottom line is I am absolutely passionate about the power and value of coaching. And I hope that people, I just want to double check on something here. I hope people can actually see me as I'm speaking. Sandra, is that correct? I just want to make sure. We can see you. Good, great. So I'm absolutely passionate about the power and value of coaching, having been in it for a number of years and having been fortunate to have our model assessed and evaluated and we presented the findings to uh, Harvard Medical School on what happens when people experience coaching and what may what difference it can make in an organization and also with individuals so I will will move along here because you are going to you are going to see that in action you're going to see some coaching in action in a few minutes but first of all I want to I want to add and introduce you to the rest of our fabulous team at coaching out of the box that's going to be supporting this demo today these demos today so we've got Merv Rogers who is our MCC master certified coach and also our chief coaching officer he uh, supports our coach facilitator team he develops our curriculum uh, adjusts our curriculum at different times and comes with over 11,500 hours of coaching experience as well as many many hours working and supporting organizations as well along with um, his unique, his unique approach and his unique um, style. And Merv, did you want to say just a couple of words? I would love to believe that all that is true. So thank you very much. <laughs> that would be all I need to say, and I, I appreciate that. Okay. And if, as you can see, all, all of his wonderful accomplishments are there. We're really happy to have Merv here today. And also... Rosa Adinga is here and she is part of our coach facilitator team and she has she works and has extensive experience with leaders at all levels of in the organization she also has a, a business background a marketing back background and um, I think is another uh, passionate advocate for coaching and also for supporting the development of um, authentic leaders in organizations and Rosa and so thank you Rosa for being here as well and Rosa um, just say a, a couple of words I just want to take you with me wherever I go for that introduction thank you <laughs> <laughs> And I just wanted to, you know, say how excited I am to be um, part of the webinar and get to uh, be part of the demonstrations that are coming up. Are Good. Questions. That's fantastic. And also, um, here, I'm introducing Sandra Mall, who is... Um, well, she's so many things, uh, and she is our program advisor at Coaching Out of the Box. So if you have any questions about the programs, if you're wanting to learn more, etc., Sandra is the, the person to speak with. And she also takes, uh, she really uh, oversees many things, our course registrations, our communications. She brings um, uh, what I would believe is this fabulous combination of organizational skills uh, and uh, in-depth uh, ability to see the bigger picture as well as amazing technical skills too which have come in very very handy at many many different times um, with our website and our registration systems and our other systems and processes so Sandra would you like to just say a Hello and 
Anything Hello. else you'd like to say? Happy to be here. Um, love talking to you. So please, if you have any questions about anything, any of our programs, our products, please let me know. Um, the link is on there to book a call with me. You can also email at um, advisor at coachingoutofthebox.com. And please be sure to use the group chat in this webinar. We love hearing from you. Right. And we also have a couple of other people here today who are going to, who have graciously volunteered to be coached. And um, you'll be meeting them in a little bit when we get the coaching demo start, started. But I want to just clarify for our time today, we want you to see how it can happen in a short space of time because we don't have you know a lot of time here today and we want to really get to a few demos for you we also um we want you to see the different styles you know there's different styles there's no one perfect way and yet they're all they're all following a process we also uh, and you'll see the icf core competencies in a minute we'll put them up on the screen and how things can happen just in the moment and you can see skills that are used for that and we're also in each of the coaching demos we're going to be following that by a debrief of it and uh, that's where you know you can put your comments as well up in the uh, in the chat area too and so uh, our live coaching de demonstrations or sessions and I want to emphasize this we have no idea what's going to happen these are not scripted they're not rehearsed we do not know what what our fabulous uh, coaches uh, will be bringing up today uh, and I remember Merv wrote this the improv of coaching because coaching is really improv anyway because <laughs> you never know but we'll you'll see that in the moment and uh, be able to see how that unfolds the the coaching demos are without a doubt our most popular webinars that we have uh, but it also is important for you to know, I mean, like I said, Merv has 11,500 hours of coaching. Rosa has over 700. It takes time to develop your coaching skills and it requires a lot of practice. So, and when you're first getting started, and it took me a long time, it can be a bit intimidating. So that's why these coaching demo demonstrations can really support you, we hope, in developing your confidence and growing as a coach. So I'll just move along and I want to just emphasize that the the definition of coaching and this is this is the ICF and so I think it's really important that we just remind ourselves that it's partnering with clients customers colleagues employees etc in a thought-provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize maximize their personal and professional potential and the ICF, which is the largest professional association of coaches in the world, worked hard over a number of years to de de define the ICF core competencies. There's 11 of them, and you can see them here, and you will be seeing some of them. Not all of them happen in every single solitary coaching um, moment or coaching time. And these are the ones that um, are the core competencies of coaching. So, without further ado, we are going to have our first coaching demonstration. And so, what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask Minda, are you there and on your video? Let's see if we can see you. Good to go. You can hear and you're okay, great. And Rosa, you're there too. I and I want to, I will be timing uh, this and you've got 12 minutes. <laughs> and so I am going to uh, be quiet and let you get started. And, and Minda, thank you so much again for being willing to come on uh, today and uh, be coached by Rosa. So, without You're further welcome. ado, go for it. <laughs> awesome. Um, Minda, it is great to meet you. As uh, Allison said, um, this is completely unscripted, so this is the first time that we get to meet. I also want to reiterate her gratitude. Um, it, there's a different dynamic. I want to recognize there's a different dynamic to a conversation where there's other people um, and you're being recorded. But my intention and my hope is to create a space, it's just the two of us, um, to talk about something that's most relevant for you. Uh, 
Okay. Having said that, um, over the next 11 minutes, um, what is one thing we can focus on that will make the biggest impact to your week? This is actually an impact on my life. It's something that I've noticed about the last six months, and it's something that I'm actually really glad I have this opportunity. I have a lack of motivation. I have good intentions. Okay. I've always been a person who, you know, I've had two jobs, I've had classes, I've always been a busy, busy person. But lately, I find that I'm having real lack of motivation to follow through. Um, I'll give you an example. I just took a payroll certification course and I waited till the night before the exam to study. And then I jammed it into seven hours. And that's not something I would normally do. You know, I planned my time, plot my time, but I just couldn't seem to get myself motivated to study. And I'm finding it in all areas of my life. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so at the end of our time together, our 10 minutes, what do you want to walk away with in terms of that, you know, motivation piece that you're talking about? I think just an understanding of, you know, what's, what's going on right now? Like, why, why am I like this? I'm not like this. And I just don't understand, you know, I can, I see it and I feel it and I know I'm doing it, but I can't stop. Okay. Um, so it's just an awareness of, you know, why is this happening to me? I guess. How can I stop it? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you saying that that awareness piece is that first place of if you understand why, then you can um, you know, go forward. And I, it's interesting because I hear there's a separation for you of you know that work ethic. You say you had two jobs, you have courses, you've you've always filled, you've always done, um, and now you're feeling that motivation is uh, fizzling. So I'm wondering what. Yeah. What does yeah. the word motivation look like? When you think about a time when you were motivated, however you're describing that, um, what did it look like? It's, for lack of a better word, it's being jacked about something, I guess, okay. is what. Okay. Um, is having a goal and reaching it. So when I have a goal, oh, now I'm starting to coach myself. When I have a goal, I always want to attain it. And so I'll do anything I can to attain it. Um, an example is when I was a single parent, one of the things I wanted to do was never always have my kids have their winter vacation. So I have sold everything under the sun to ensure that my kids had their vacation. So I was motivated because I had that goal. And it also sounds like it was a, if you take that example, a goal that meant something to you, right? It wasn't just a, my goal is to get my groceries done. My goal, it's, it's that, especially in that example, it was a goal that meant something to you. Um, is that a true assessment? Do I hear? Yeah. Okay. So if you think oh, about yeah. life now, um, what is that goal? Do you, what is that goal that means something to you? If you look at that landscape. I honestly don't know. Okay. Maybe that's the problem is I don't have the goal. Okay. I'm finding it's affecting me. It's even things such as I'll commit to doing something. Last night, my niece and nephew had dance that I was going to go to. Instead of going to it, I put it off and said, I'll just go see them at Mosaic, which is somewhere that they're going to dance in a couple of weeks. So, you know, my goal is to see them dance, but I keep putting it off. Well, why didn't I just go last night? Mm. Minda, there's something in what you just said that this sounds like it's more than just a motivation, something that, you know, pushes you to, to um, do something, check something off. Um, even as you talked about that, it was just like there was this, I don't know, drive isn't necessarily the word I'm hearing, but there's this fizzle sizzle I don't know what it is but there's yeah. something deeper than that motivation again something like you said there's a goal of watching them being there but even as you describe missing it it sounds like there's a cost there for you so what's what's deeper than the motivation for you you know I don't know it's like I make the excuse that I'm tired everything makes me tired now and you know I'm gonna say I probably still do more than most people do because I'm I'm built that way but at the same time, it's not what I'm used to doing. And I just can't seem to figure out 
what it, what it is. Why am I like this now? Where even though it matters to me, it doesn't matter enough for me to do it. Okay. So I'll spin that around and say, what now, as you look around, what now matters enough to you to do it? I don't know. Um, I have a lot of things that it would matter to me to do it. Um, you know, I'm looking for, for example, I'm looking for a business to start because at some point, you know, I want to retire. So I'd like to start something small now and grow it over the years to a point where, okay, I'm ready to not work for somebody else. I'm work, really to work for me now. But it's like I can't even do the research to decide what I want to do. It's like I'm getting overwhelmed by everything. Okay. And it doesn't sound... You know, I don't... Sorry, say that again? It doesn't sound like that's a fun place for you. It's really not. It's very... Um, it's very uncomfortable because that's not what I'm like and I can't... But even though I know I'm doing it, I can't seem to jump that hurdle and get motivated to do it. <laughs> so Mindy, you talk about knowing, where's the knowledge coming from? What do you, where do you know that you need to like? I know it because it's, it, it is me. It's how I define myself, right? And I feel like I've lost a little bit of definition because I've always been that person that I'm always busy and I always strive for more and I'm ambitious, I guess. And I feel like that ambition is somehow gone. Right, and I'm coasting right now, and I don't like that feeling. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting. We're not solving this in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the beauty of this conversation. It's not about solving it. It might just be about raising something that you then take away, because this sounds big, and it sounds as if there's, as you talk about the motivation, it sounds like there's the, you define how you define yourself. Um, and I wonder, again, that ambition place, you said, you know, it doesn't feel like I'm ambitious. Those things sound very important to you. Um, and I'm curious yeah. about why. Why is that drive, ambition, those words that you used, what's so important to you about those and having them? It is important to me because I've always been the responsible one, like growing up. Um, my family is very supportive. My family is very good. But there were some family issues when I was growing up. And then my first marriage, I was the breadwinner, and so I had to be responsible. There was mental illness in that relationship, so I was responsible for getting the kids to activities, putting the kids in activities. When I, I can't let responsibility fall because, you know, I got married for a second time and I was cheated on. So again, I can't let anybody take care of me. I have to be the responsible one. And so this feeling right now that I have is that, like, I can never drop the ball. I can never feel like I'm not in control of a situation because these things have happened to me. And I think that's why I feel very uncomfortable right now because am I just tired? Or is it that it's too much? Or is it that I just don't want the responsibility anymore? It's a lot to carry. Because I hear responsibility equals motivation equals ambition equals who you are. And those are yeah. big. And, big, you know, very big. Um, so in terms of our time. And Three right minutes. Now, thank you. It's like that voice from God. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> was awesome. um, in terms of right now, um, if you were to give Minda a bit of a break, not saying hang up that responsibility or hang up the motivation and say, oh, I'm going to put those in a box and never see them again. Just put them on the side and give Minda a break. What could be different in the next day? What could be different for you if you were just to put them, just put them aside? You know, I think I would enjoy things more. I mean, here's an example. I have a ladies golf night tonight. I'm looking forward to it. I'm already stressed out about there's so much traffic and, and congestion in Regina because of construction. I'm already stressed out about going but I don't want to go because I'm already thinking about how I'm going to get there. You know what I'm saying? I have to get there because my team is counting on me. So it's even that responsibility. So I think if I could just let things go, 
then maybe I wouldn't be punishing myself so much or coming down on myself so hard. So, so what if I'm late? What does it matter? But to me, it matters. What about that matters so much? Because I can't let people down. If I'm not responsible, I'm letting someone else down. Okay. So let's take that, you know, event tonight. You had said, I would enjoy myself more. What if it was less about responsibility and more just about everything you did around it was for your enjoyment? What would it look like? Well, it would feel a lot better, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, like I worry, I'm worrying about everything. And it's like, so now golfing is become a chore to me. Whereas it should be something I go out with these ladies, we have fun, we golf. Now I'm looking at it as a chore and I don't want to do it. So what if you let go of it? It's not a chore, it's an enjoyment. Well, if I can change my mindset, it's, it's all my mindset, right? then I would enjoy my golf. Like I was looking forward to it when I joined it. And I'm like, Ooh, what a pain. Like I don't want to do it. Right. So we have 15 seconds left ish. What are you going to do to enjoy it? I'm going to stop worrying about traffic. <laughs> like I'm just going to go whatever. When I get there, I get there and I'm not going to worry about letting people down. Okay. Excellent. Well done. May I jump in? This is Murph. Hello, folks. Hi, Murph. Uh, Minda, listen, um, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing you on the golf uh, links this <laughs> afternoon. I think that'll be exciting. Um, question for you, Minda. Um, what was this like for you? Uh, what was, in, in the terms of how Rosa coached you, what worked well for you? Um, worked well is that I'm a rambler and she let me ramble a bit, but then reeled me in when I needed to be. Okay. okay. And uh, when she rolled you in or when she kind of wrapped you in a little bit, uh, in, in other words, funneled you down into a focus, um, what did that do for you really though? I think it made me, as we talked, I came to, I went down the path and I started to realize that I don't know that it's the motivation so much as the maybe tired of being responsible and feeling that responsibility all the time. So I'm putting it on myself where it's becoming, it's, it's how do I put this? It's not the motivation, responsibility is what it is. I had mislabeled what I'm feeling. And so now I understand what it is. Beautiful. So awareness came from it. That's wonderful. Now, uh, yeah. and of course, you know, it's a fine amount of time, but still you've got some really cool awareness from the sounds of it. Uh, and I always like to re-ask this question that, that uh, Rosa spoke to. What are you walking away with as a result of your interaction today with your coach? I think I'm going to be more mindful when I do things or I commit to things. I'm going to decide if, is this something I really want to do and I feel strongly about, or is this something I feel I have to do? Mm -hmm. Very cool. How long do you think it would take you to have that awareness if you didn't have Rosa in your life? <laughs> well, I wouldn't have it because I didn't realize it till today. Sure <laughs> yeah, that's a self-serving question, but it's true, right? It's about accelerating that thinking to a point that, that, um, um, you know, that, that you can have a, a, an immediate awareness. So thank you, Minda. And, and thank you, Rosa, for your, um, as others in the chat have just described your masterful coaching. Um, you know, what I like about how Rosa coaches is she doesn't get hooked into the obvious. It's really quite delightful. Uh, and she uses silence exceptionally well. And what I mean by hooked on the, the obvious is there were many times that a that a coach could fall into the trap of, so what do you think? Uh, you know, what would work? In other words, rush to solution. Um, but even at the start of the call, if you remember after the contracting, when she kind of agreed to the terms of the discussion, uh, albeit in public, um, you know, she asked, what's the one thing we can focus on? And, and to Minda's point is, you know, she, she brought in a, a very wide subject. Um, but she still, but Rosa still narrowed it down again and continued to, mm -hmm. to funnel that focus. Um, and as you suggested, Minda, that that 
just that by itself, by, by having no, no fix, no results, uh, gave you a level of awareness that perhaps you may not have had before. Um, and so that's, you know, very, very impressive. Um, and, and I hope the audience did notice the silence because it's, it's real easy for the coach to kind of fill in the gap. You know? And she didn't. Um, you know, I, I forget the exact wordings, but um, um, I think you said you, you don't have a goal, or I think those were your words. And she just shut up and listened. And you had to, you had to fill in the blanks. And what you filled in was your awareness. What you filled in was your desire. What you filled in that space uh, was your truth. And um, and so that really uh, was a wonderful experience that um, uh, you know I feel Rosa really orchestrated for you. Right? Um, a lot of skills uh, that Rosa, you know, obviously listening skills or questions. Um, I've noticed this to Rosa before. And it's a great technique. It's where she'll she'll reflect back what she heard and then ask a very poignant question, an open-ended question from that content. So it's not like I heard you went to the mall and then asked you something about how your car is doing. Um, you know, it's a real strong connection between. Gosh, I hear you're, you know. Um, uh, you know, looking for a goal and, you know, let's explore that some more. And so that connectivity between listening and the powerful questioning is, is, is up here. and a lot of encouraging happening. And, and, and even at the requesting at the end, uh, you know, what, what she, uh, she used the technique to shift your perspective. You know, you view it as A, um, and as a coach, she didn't say you view it A was wrong. She didn't uh, make you wrong or, or suggest that the way you were thinking about it wasn't working. Um, she just asked you to think of it a different way. And you could have openly said yes or no, and you know it didn't matter. Uh, and so that's very nice, um, authentic coaching because we are working from your agenda all the time, and we're working from what's right from you, and we honor you for what you want. And um, so that um, choice to uh, support your current perspective and invite you into a new one. Of, you know, what would it be like if you uh, let go and had fun and, and saw it as a cool event um, and, and you know, refine that perspective and allowed you to step into it again um, is a, a great demonstration of that kind of um, handholding that the coach and the client do. So very, very um, um, pleased to see, to hear that and to see that happen. And um, there's no question. I'm sure there's more conversations you could have. But I guess my bet is you will be driving through some traffic today, thinking about your def definite or your destination a lot differently. And for that, I'm pleased we had the uh, 12 minutes together. So thank you for your time, and Rosa, thank you for your expertise and. Uh, Back to you, Allison, for the. Okay, and thank you again. And I just want to draw a little. There's a there's a couple of uh, comments in the uh, chat area, and I think uh, this one from Kay. Thank you, Kay. The client offering examples help narrow the focus. That was very um, very a, a, a good observation. And thank you again, Minda, for being willing to do this with us today. You have supported us and are providing um, excellent value for people to be able to see real coaching in action. So thank you so much. And of course, thank you, Rosa. And now we are going to move along to our next coaching demonstration. And we have a lovely, another lovely human being who has agreed to be coached, and that is Peter Gosling. And, P and I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, Peter. Are you there? Can we, can we hear you and see you? Yes, you can. Am I uh, loud enough? Oh, yes, that's great. Okay. I can, and I can see your lovely face just just uh, there a moment ago. And so thank you, Peter. And today, you're going to be uh, coached by Merv. And so Merv, as you know, um, we've got we've got 12 minutes for it. So I'm going to just start the clock and I'll inter I'll inter interrupt you at a about to give you a three minutes uh, sign. I forgot to mention that to Rosa. Does that work for you, Merv? Yeah, that's good, that's good. And, and contrary to popular belief, Peter and I might have met each other. I think we met each other oh. in the class. So oh. we do know each other. We, okay. we want to reveal that. Okay, um, all right. We, we have not, um, 
uh, we have not conversed in terms of what we're going to chat about. Um, so, Peter, um, thank you for your time. Now, as Rosa set up the, the previous um, coaching situation, the same rests for you. This is a very odd situation in the sense that you are communicating to the great unwashed, uh, to people that are on this call, as well as people who might listen to it later. And so, for that um, principle, I'm, I'm going to encourage you or offer you a suggestion that uh, I hopefully will ask you a wise question that will generate a wise response. Um, and if that should, should that happen and you don't want to share that response uh, with the larger audience, um, just say, I got it. You know, I got an answer to that. Uh, um, because the cool thing about coaching is I don't need to know, you need to know. And so, so as we go through this, if I ask a question and you have an answer that you prefer not to share to the great unwashed here, um, I'll know that by you just responding. Okay, Merv, I have an answer for that. Let's, that that's fine. Uh, because that's all we're looking for here. Is that, is that a fair agreement between you and I, Peter? Yes, yes, I get it. Thank you, Merv. Excellent, excellent. So have you come to the call with, uh, with uh, 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 something to talk about? Uh, yes. Um, Good. All right. Well, let's start there, right then. Let's, okay. Let's, so we don't need to go any further. Um, mm -hmm. So you have a topic you want to talk about, and so by the time you and I are going to finish talking, which will be about eleven minutes from now, as as uh, before with Rosa. By the time you and I are finished talking, what do you want to make sure you walk away with, though? Um, a sense of clarity and um, validation. Oh, I like that. So help me explore. What gives you a sense that you don't have clarity now? Well, I, I, I'm undergoing what I consider a, a change in career. Okay. You know, after 40 years of having a, a, a job that you know, basically is full time. Um, in the last few years, I've, I've um, gone into consulting and even in the consulting mode, it's been, um, I've gotten contracts that require almost full-time or full-time. Um, but now I've decided on the coaching as, a, as an encore career, if you will, okay. and it's different. Um, and, and I'm thinking about you know, when, how I'm going to make this happen from where I'm at now. Um, and the idea of marketing myself to individuals is different than if you, you know, you go in, you, I, I only did this once, but punch time clock, so to speak. You have something, you're there for eight hours or 10 hours or 12 hours or whatever. And then it, this is different. Um, so I'm thinking through what I need to do in terms of marketing myself. How do I get new clients? What happens when I lose the clients that I have? How do I replace them? Um, and that's a whole new mode for me. Um, that's exciting on the one hand, but also a little bit uh, terrifying on the other. I bet it is. But I'm confused though, because that sounds very clear to me. What's the clarity that you're hoping for? <clears throat> well, am I going in the right direction thinking through this um, how, how I would market myself, I guess, first of all, getting the, the credentials and then making sure that my uh, resume and LinkedIn and, every, and, and my visibility is as it is, then making contacts with people. Um, I'm reading that there's, there's some people that go into coaching that end up without a lot of clients. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't want to be one of those. Um, so I guess I'm a little worried about that. Am okay. I doing right? How, you know, and, um, so, so sorry, I cut you off there, but just for clarity then for me, is that what you meant at the top of the call about validation? I, you want to validate your path is correct. Is that, is that yes. what you're talking about? Yes. So, Maybe just, just have somebody to kind of help me noodle this through a little bit too, that, um, is, is, it feels like it might, it's the right direction, but I just don't, I'm just not sure. You know, it's, it's an unknown. Um, I tend to be a planner. I like to be prepared. This is an unknown. Ah, yes. Okay. And so obviously, and you said it, um, one of your options is to have somebody to help you noodle through it. 
Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but are there other possibilities for you to get clarity and to get validation of your, of your next steps forward? What else could you do? Um, I could, I could stop worrying about it and just get, and just sort of enjoy the fact that this is, this is more of an unknown than I'm used to. And that maybe it's just an, a, a new thing for me and I'm learning along the way. I feel like in a way I, I should sort of let go of the, of the worry side. Um, and I think I'll be, I'll do better if I can. Okay. I like that. Okay. So certainly letting go of the worry is, is an option and, and embracing the unknown. Is there anything else you think you could do to, to drive clarity and validate your path that you're on? Well, I could write it down. Tell me more about write it down. Um, well, I, I could set a, like do a, a time task thing where, you know, I have certain things, certain uh, big events that I'd like to achieve by a certain date. You know, for instance, getting the ICF credential by September or going in, you know, full, full time as of November or, you know, things like that. Just put those down and then kind of find some time to fill in the blanks. What do I need to do to get the coaching hours and prepare and all the rest? Uh, okay. That might be, that could be fun, actually. Well, that kind of sounds like that's the strength you already have. You're a good planner, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we could use that strength. We could call on something that you know works, which is develop a plan, a, a, a project plan, so to speak. So that, that could be an option. So we've got lots of cool options. Um, get somebody to help you noodle out the, the, the specifics. Get some, uh, some guidance from that perspective. Um, letting go of some of this worry and, and acknowledging it as worry as opposed to uh, real fear. Um, enjoy uh, some of the unknown. It's, it's uncharted territory for you. And, um, and of course, the last one is to really develop a project plan for your execution. Those are wonderful uh, possibilities, things to do. Uh, is there anything else? Um, that's, no, that, that's, uh, well, I guess um, also uh, figuring out how to, uh, the financial side of it while I'm building a business. Okay. That's, that's always a consideration. Uh, it's it's uh, achievable, but it's, it's a little stressful. Okay. Uh, when you mean figure out the financials, what would that mean for you? That means how far do I dip into retirement right now uh, or go for a, a, a different job to kind of get through the, through the next six months um, and then take away time from uh, achieving this goal. Okay. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of a funding plan or an investment plan for, yes. uh, for the, the and, that, and that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Right. Um, another brilliant option. And so any more? I think that's it. I think that's pretty cool. So of all of these things you could do, let's focus on maybe what you might, what feels like something you might want to do next. Uh, and maybe there's a pecking order. Um, but um, you know, someone to noodle through it. Um, just work on stop letting go of the worry or allowing the worry to coexist. Uh, uh, enjoy the unknown. I write it down and do a project plan and uh, do a kind of an investment plan. Which one of those five things is the best use of our time to talk about now? Um, letting go of the worry. <laughs> I love that one. I'm glad you picked that one. That's a cool one. I love <laughs> it. And so um, I don't know why you should worry. It's only about your entire life, your entire career, no income, and uh, it's a change. I, I don't see the issues. Do you? <laughs> Three minutes. <laughs> All right. So uh, what would you look like if you didn't worry? What would you be like if you weren't worrying? I would probably be more focused and have more time uh, to focus and be more kind of lighthearted. I probably would be, I probably do my coaching better uh because that wouldn't be in the background um and and it would be it would be an adventure versus a <clears throat> a mountain i have to climb 
I love it. I want to get to the top of it, but I, it, it's right. still, you know, it's, it takes a lot to get up there versus right. an adventure. So a lot of what you described I love because it really talks about what it will look like when I'm done. So it's the outcome. I'll be more focused. I'll be lighthearted. I'll, I'll feel it's an adventure. Who do you need to be in order for those to occur? I, I have to, I, I'd like to be a, a coach in, in transition or a, a, a someone in transition to being a, a more, um, more adept, uh, more competent, uh, more experienced coach that is there to start with, but just, just needs to kind of, kind of come out of the box, so to speak. Okay. So that's kind of who you are, actually, is you are a coach in transition or you are transitioning, right? Yes. Uh, so when, what's acceptable for you, for somebody who is in transition? What's, what's an acceptable outcome? Is it acceptable to worry? A little bit. Okay. Um, Not when, when will you know, and I'm, my time is probably toast in about three seconds, um, so let me, um, let me offer this request for you. Uh, okay. what if, what if you took a look at what's happening around you and just considered it a brand new country, a brand new adventure? Um, and what if you just looked at all of the inputs and decisions you have to make? as fundamental curiosities. It's interesting I have to make a project plan. It's very interesting that I have to figure out how to invest. And what if you discover, as anyone does during a transition, why don't you just set out to discover things about this transition? And in fact, you could, you could be really, really good at being that person in transition. What if you just decided to be brilliant at making transitions, what would that be like for you? That'd be, that'd be fun. Do you think it's something you could do or try? Yeah, yeah. And if if the if the whatever impediment might be might be just a a mean a a step of uh, uh, that I need to or a hurdle or whatever to get to the goal. Everything in the context of the of the goal, that it isn't something to stymie me or hold me back but really it's it's a step along the way so yeah i i like that thank you Murr. what's your mantra if i had to create a t-shirt that has your name on it and the mantra of of uh, you know peter the adventurer peter the great uh the <laughs> discoverer of different lands what's your mantra that's going to keep you focused on you being the adventurous man you are um getting to the goal okay What's the mantra the though? Achiever. What's going to keep you motivated during you reach, by the time you reach the goal, by the summit? The achiever. Oh, you're an achiever. Woo, Peter the achiever. <laughs> All right. All right. I want you to go, if, if you will, I want you to spend a little bit of money on t-shirts and write up a t-shirt that says Peter the adventure. I want you to paste that up, in the, up over top of your, head, uh, your bed at, in the night so you can see it as you go to sleep. Um, and everywhere you can is Peter the adventure is a real live person. I'm talking to him. Um, and he's not going to get stuck anymore because Peter the adventure, he just works around the, the lost issues and challenges and, is, you know, he can do it, man. Cause Peter, haven't you done something like this before? Uh, yeah. 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 I thought so. So Peter the Adventurer's there, and I'll, I'll stop our conversation now, and Rosa can pipe in. Um, but thank you, Peter, for your time, and you, um, it's nice to meet the new Peter. <laughs> so what a, it's, it was interesting, Peter, I have to say, again, thank you for letting us, you know, witness all of this, um, and even at the end when it was such a big, you know, you're just like, yeah, yeah, I've done this before, yeah. Um, it was just this powerful yes. Um, so Peter, very similar to the 
uh, it was an absolute pleasure to watch. I know for me, um, hopefully for as people are in the chat are saying, um, specifically for this conversation, I'm curious, what was that like for you? What did that feel like to go through the last 10, 12 minutes? Um, I like, I, well, first thing on a, on a personal note, just having someone pay attention to me and that and and you know so focused is is something that's enjoyable to have um but i really feel like uh merv helped me and he really did give me this validation that i was looking for in the beginning um and I, I i felt like i needed that and i said that and he 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 got around to to that through this and helped me kind of look at things through a different lens so to speak um and I, I and I and so I, I'm appreciative of that. I feel like, a, and you know, um, like a burden is lifted in a way. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, so I can see clear and clear, more clearly in terms of what I have to do, and 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 I feel more motivated. Mm -hmm. So, in it in 11 minutes too, which is quite a, remarkable. Um, it is remarkable. I think the dance that you both had, you both contributed to that. Um, I'm curious about what, what Merv did to give you that, um, again, that clarity that you were looking for. What was it that he did that, you know? I think he challenged me in a, in a way that um, to look at, I think underlying beliefs he was, he was going after here. Um, that, you know, are they, are they really hurdles or is this just a, you know, a step along the way? And, and, and I, you know, I, I don't have to worry about not getting over that, that hurdle. I, you know, it's just like, okay, it's a validation of getting too closer to the goal. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like he, he kind of reframed that for me and it helped me realize that that was a way to reframe it. Let's put it that way. It's interesting, even as your body language, when you're talking at the beginning, it was this ah, clarity, validation, huge. And even as you're talking now, there's this kind of sly smile of like, ah, yeah, I think I got this um, in this 12 minutes, as you talked about. Um, I'm curious about one thing. Uh, what's the one thing after the 12 minutes that you're, that you now have that you didn't have before your conversation with Murph? Um. It, it feels like I found something that was missing. Um, I knew I was, I'm, I know where I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get there, but it, it feels like um, a, a level of motivation that, that sort of came to me, that just kind of uncovered. I shouldn't use that word these days, but um, that, that's what it was. It was kind of like there, but he helped me kind of um, find it. I know that's vague, but do you get it? I do. I absolutely do. And even as you were talking, what's interesting about um, Merv's ability, um, again, both with practice and just his presence, is it's almost like he lifted uh, the, the veil that you put on the stuff you already had. <laughs> it was, like you yes. said, it was just kind of like this awareness uh, that he created. Um, both by observations and the challenge. Um, and uh, even from the beginning, um, I personally love watching Merv coach um, because he had this ability even at the beginning to take clarity and validation, which are big. And as you were describing, you know, this is what I, I, I need clarity on and you were listing and you were planning and he said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, that sounds clear. So even challenged back saying, is that really where we're going? Is that it? Um, even in the middle of it, he came back and said, what's the most important kind of catch you on? Um, and used that humor that he has to, this is big stuff you were talking about and to lighten that load um, a little bit. So that, that excitement that you were talking about comes across. Um, just wanted to even point to some of the stuff in the chat. Um, powerful questioning is something that you know, Merv's ability to coach um, is woven through his, his whole presence. And, you know, things like uh, what gives you a sense that you don't have clarity. It's kind of like, yeah, I'm going to push you a little bit, ask you those questions to push you forward um, or create that space where you're moved forward. Or who do you need to be? 
um, or always those great, powerful questions that move you to action. Okay, so here are your words. Um, and I think one of the most um, powerful things is he used your words in that validation piece. So that powerful listening of here are your words. Oh yeah, and here's your list of things. Which one can we work on first? Um, and uh, so for me, even as some people were talking about just the request, the t-shirt, um, or, you know, things like that, that allowed for that awareness of, you know, that clarity you talked about pulling the, the shade off something that you already had um, and wasn't about his request. Um, it was about, you know, how does he get you, how did you create the space to move you more forward towards the goals? And I wanted to um, also bring something up and I wanted to thank and commend and acknowledge Merv for um, this is, you know, having a coaching business, being a coach. Um, those, those, those interesting things that you brought up are things that Merv knows about. Um, you know, some would say he's an expert on them. And he never brought in his, his expertise. He never said, oh, Peter, you know what you should do first? Or but it was Peter, I, you got this. So let's create the space so that you created those actions. You created the accountabilities um, and in your own language and that validation. Um, I know there's stuff on the chat. Allison, did I actually, you know what? I'm going to, before I come to you, Allison, I want to talk to Merv for a minute. Merv, in that conversation, what was, uh, I guess, how do you do what you do? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, that, what was the most powerful place for you, um, even as you, as you move through it? Before we I go guess, down, you know, I, 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 I appreciate where Peter is. Uh, mm -hmm. I've probably been there many times over the last 22 years. Um, you know, it, to me, um, um, my first sense was Peter just needed a space, a space to, to think out loud. Um, and so that's what we did. We just thought, we just thought out loud together. Um, of course, it was all his content, which was good, but uh, um, yeah, we just, uh, he just kind of needed the, the, I mean, that was his first request. He needed somebody to noodle it through. And so, um, uh, so we kind of did that. Um, what I liked about what, what Peter did was um, he uh, allowed me to pull him back into the conversation. Uh, he didn't, um, he, he could have filled more information and more detail and more context, but he allowed me to kind of uh, continue to restructure the conversation so that we could continue forward instead of just share information. And I think that, uh, uh, that was certainly my motivation is to, to keep him moving forward in his agenda, um, as opposed to getting wrapped up into the, the, the quality of it. Um, there, I think that's, now there's a question there then I want to toss it back to, um, Allison in just a real second here, but it's fine. Uh, Absolutely fine. Would you, so the, uh, would you talk about your decision to provide Peter with the framing of the new country? Uh, well, it was very successful. I feel curious about providing an image. Ah, okay, fair question. Um, yeah, there's no question. The, the more you can get the imagery from the client, the better. Um, uh, but he actually did provide it for us in his response because I got the word um, uh, more focused, lighthearted adventure uh, out of him. And from the word adventure, then I kind of built on it. So uh, I, I, I think, uh, although I did create the T-shirt, um, and he's welcome to create his own T-shirt, um, I did put the metaphor around it. But he really gave me that word that I just chose to build build upon. So that I hope that helps explain that, Kay. Um, all right, back to you, Allison. Thank you very much. It was fun. Always fun to coach. All right. Well, I just um, again thank you so much, Peter. And also, Minda, earlier, for supporting us today. This is, I, I think this is a beautiful demonstration as well of how, what can happen in 12 minutes. Because honestly, I had the timer on. This is what we're talking about. This is why we're so passionate, or I'm so passionate about the power of coaching. And um, in this, it, it also, I, wa I wanted you to see when you come to these webinars that we put on at Coaching Out of the Box that we're world-class. These are world-class coaches. We are world-class in how we deliver our programs, in the quality of our programs, in what we do, 
on our virtual classrooms as well as when we're on site as well. And I just want to, to emphasize that we would love to work with you if you're not already working with us. We'd love to have you uh, take our, our programs. Talk to us, call us. Um, and I, I, I want to I wanna also make a comment about, for some of you, you may be at different places. And just consider these, these pieces. Uh, we will be sending out a uh, recording of this. We'll be sending out some follow-on information for you as well. And uh, we'd love to help you and support you in any way we can, answer your questions, that kind of thing. And I want to leave you with something that I think is so um, important. And yes, we've got programs and I'm leaving them up on the screen. We'd love to have you join us. But here's the thing. In the work that we have done with large organizations who hired external consultants to assess, do surveys, et cetera, et cetera, we didn't do this. this were, these were the top seven results that we presented to Harvard Medical School a little while back that came out of this. Improved listening. What if we had that? Improved communication improved ability to give feedback, improvement in conflict resolution, improve positively impacted relationships, improvement in team dynamics and team communication, and increased ability to engage in conversations that are solutions focused and promote accountability. That's what a large organization came uh, the the results that came out those were the top there's more but what if that happened all over the place that's why oops <laughs> I've got my beeper going that's why we're so passionate about it and I'm so passionate about it because this is life-changing to approach problems approach challenges approach change approach issues with this type of communication and some of you may want to go on for in-depth uh, skill development we have that some of you may want to learn the model we have that and I just again want to acknowledge and thank our fabulous world-class team for supporting this webinar Rosa thank you so much thank you Peter thank you so much Minda, wherever you are, thank you so much. And Sandra, thank you so much. And um, everyone, um, thank you for your attention. Thank you for coming to our webinar. And for those who are listening to the recording, enjoy. Um, and we're actually ahead of schedule. So how about that? That's pretty good. Anybody got a quick question while well, I've got a couple of minutes? Or we can all just take off and get on with the rest of our days our day. <laughs> okay. All right. So onwards and upwards and uh, oh, I know. What are you walking away with? Almost forgot. Anybody else? Great session. Wonderful. Valued the opportunity. Thank you, Peter. Anybody else? What did you learn? What did you, what, did, what are you going to do different in your coaching or add to your coaching? Anybody? Okay. Well, have a fabulous rest of your day. Thank you so much. And we hope you come back and enjoy our ongoing webinars as well as our programs. All right. Thanks, folks. Have a great day. Thank you. Enjoy. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody. Great job, everybody. Thank you so pause, much. Pause the recording. It's good. I've stopped the recording. Yep. It's, really? Yep. It's, it's stopped recording, right?